Hey Corkies, welcome back. Today we're going to be reviewing a sake from the Kiku Masamune Kahugura Brewery in Japan. And we're going to be teaching you all about sake and how it's made. So stay tuned. <laughs> everybody, welcome back to CorkandJava.com, your go-to place for coffee and wine reviews and how-tos. On this channel, we like to expand and enrich your experience with all your favorite beverages. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you never miss a video. So as Billy mentioned, today we're reviewing sake. Yep, it's from the Kiku Masamune uh, Kahugura Brewery in Japan. And uh, what brewing technique do they use? Komodo Zukuri? Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> It's a, I'm sorry if I'm totally butchering that. It's one of the older traditional ways to make sake. Just like champagne, there's the traditional way uh, to, to create champagne and get um, the carbonation in there. There's a lot of kind of newer hacks that uh, winemakers use to make sparkling wine that don't use that traditional method. Well, this is one of the older, more traditional ways to make sake. And here is the, the bottle for those of you who are interested in that kind of stuff. So a lot of people wonder, what is sake? Is it wine? Is it beer? Like, what exactly is it? Is it a liquor? And a lot of people call it uh, rice wine, which it has probably the most similarities to wine than anything else uh, as far as taste, but it's actually kind of closer to beer with how it's made. So sake is made with rice, which um, a lot of beer is made out of. It's, oh, it's particularly in the U.S. If you're a fan of like Bud Light and Coors Light and those kind of beers, they're all rice beers because rice is really cheap uh, to make sugar out of. But um, unlike beer uh, that's made from rice, where they have a process where they extract the sugars and then they have another process where they ferment. Uh, that wort into, uh, of that mash into a, um, a beer. Sake is both, uh, it's a one-step process to where they both extract the sugars from the rice at the same time it's fermenting. And because of that, it's a lot higher efficient fermentation and where beer can get, you know, between four to nine percent alcohol wine between nine and fifteen percent generally sake can be 18 to 20 percent alcohol oh, wow. by volume um just because of that and but a lot of times they dilute it down a little bit to where it's about 15 uh percent alcohol by volume um this one this one here is 16 percent alcohol by volume so i imagine it's diluted slightly down um they use uh special local water that uh, has been tradition for sake making. That's a very important ingredient. Both the rice and the water is probably the two most important ingredients. And then basically their method of how they brew it too is uh, um, important as well. Let's move on to how they you traditionally serve sake. Oh, okay. So um, it can be served at room temperature, chilled or heated up, warm or even hot. And typically the, the heated up warm sake is reserved for lower quality sake or sake that's uh, just been out kind of aged a while that isn't really that great anymore because you lose a lot of the flavors once you start heating it up. So lower quality sakes um, tend to be better for uh, heating up. And depending on the kind of sake you're buying, it could be either made to be better chilled or made to be had at room temperature. This one um, is designed to be uh, better chilled, but I didn't chill it for too long. I wanted to still uh, see what it was like a little bit closer to room temperature. So I chilled it down to about cellar temperature, maybe 50, 55 degrees. So uh, it's kind of in between the chilled, what a white wine we would put at and uh, room temperature. Okay. So yeah, let's... Uh, Take a look at the color first. Okay. Almost all sake is going to be really pale mm -hmm. and uh, almost clear. You're going to get a little bit of um, 
color in there, but not too much. I see a little bit of like light hay color in there, but mm -hmm. other than that, it's very, very clear and crisp. Um, not too much wine sticking to the sides of glass either, but uh, let's uh, take a sniff. Okay. I'm getting a lot of nut flavors. Um, like a lot of walnut and a, almost a little bit of creaminess in there. Do mm -hmm. you get that? Yeah, I smell more of the creaminess than... And when I say creaminess, I'm, I'm thinking kind of like a mango. Like, oh, that's not cool. like a, a little bit of like kind of the creaminess that you get out of a, a mango or a fruit. Like when I first smelled it, it made me think of like almost like a butterscotch, like those hard candies. Like it has like kind of like a sweet smell, but it's also like very like, well, I guess butterscotches aren't like super sharp, but like, there's, this there's smells, lactic acid definitely in this. It smells hot to me though. Like this doesn't smell, I mean, you said it's like not sticking alcohol. much. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, it's not sticking much to the glass, but I think it is kind of hot on the nose. Yeah. I mean. Sake generally is a very unique drink compared to wine and beer and other beverages. So it's kind of its own thing in my book. So is there going to be, you know, there's a wide gamut of smells that you can, you know, think of when you're wine tasting. Is sake going to be the same like diversity of smells? Not as diverse as like the wine as a whole, but okay. if you think of like a single varietal, it fit in there. Like you can have like a Pinot Noir, mm -hmm. like one from another has uh, very different characteristics and how it is. So it's kind of like that. I would put it in its own kind of like varietal because it's all going to be made from rice mm -hmm. no matter where you're getting or how they're making it. I just didn't know if it was so like specific to the process or the region that, you know, they strive for like a uniform kind of smell and taste, you know, or... It's going to vary a lot. Okay. Because uh, I've never had one that smells quite this um vinegary i mean there's definitely yeah, acid that's what i was yeah the there's, sharpness is the vinegar that's what yeah. i was trying to put my nose on yeah but yeah let's give it a try okay is there like a certain cheer that you do with sake or no i mean their sake is used for a lot of religious and ceremonial ritual stuff but i don't oh, know okay. any oh. well <laughs> so, you know there's like salute and yeah you know, uh -huh. and stuff just so it's got a very crisp oh, wow. crispness to it and uh yeah i'm still getting a lot of those nut flavors and a little bit of that yeah. melon as well and yeah like i said a lot of lactic acid and that's uh pretty common in a lot of sakis i don't get any of the fruit but I get more like floral and I, I taste more of the nut. Like it reminds me of like a peanut or a cashew or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot smoother than I thought it was gonna be. Like I thought it was gonna like burn a little bit and <laughs> you know, like it gives me really a refreshing actually. Like a, do you get kind of an oily texture in your mouth too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. With it, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's actually pretty nice. I would never, have thought to pick this up and try it at home like maybe out in a restaurant or something but yeah and it's it's uh pretty full bodied medium to full bodied with the mouthfeel but at the same time the flavor is not super powerful it's pretty yeah. light so it can go well with a lot of like seafoods like typical japanese food sushi uh this would be really well with mm -hmm. salads and um uh different appetizers i would i'd pair this well yeah, with for sure all right, comment down below with what kind of sake you've had. And if you don't know, let us know at least uh, how you had it. Did you have it hot, chilled, room temperature? And what'd you think of it? All right, guys, just want to let you know that the California Wine Club has a 50% off discount right now. And we'll leave a link down below if you're interested in signing up to get two bottles of wine from California with a bunch of great offers and a love it guarantee. So if you don't like what they send you or not satisfied for one reason or another, you'll get your money back. So that's 50% off. So you're basically getting two bottles for the price of one. It's hard to beat that, uh, especially if you live close to California.
Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, make sure you guys check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. We're looking forward to seeing you guys online. Until next time, bottoms up. <laughs>